James Whale. Get on down. James Whale. The most famous man on planet Earth. James Whale. Get on down. James Whale. The most famous man on planet Earth. out of there. Come, we're late. I thought by sleeping outside the street. Get out of me. Quickly. In. Go on, quickly. Uh, just a minute. Hold on. Um, hue and cry. Now. Uh, let me alarm clock. Woo! Stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. Really? I really don't. I mean, I thought we'd be, uh, we'd be on okay that time. I thought there'd be nothing wrong at all. Hi, Robin. How are you? Hi. All right. Good. Oh, I'm, so I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm sorry about that, Robin. I was going to be here on time, for goodness sake, but she made me oversleep again. We had such a rough night last night. You know, busy. Well, I know. I did the same when you know I was I mean? in, in a tent. Yeah. yeah. I know what I mean, John? Know what you mean? Very, Anyone. very difficult indeed. Anyway, hello. Welcome to the show. Whaley is on, and you can ring us now on Leeds 461000. The code, and remember the code, it's 0532. I'm worn out. Robin Colville is uh, my guest tonight from the Grumbleweeds, Hi. better known as a comedian, but tonight talking about hypnotherapy, of which he is a master. Thank you. Aren't you? That's what it says on the diploma. Is it? <laughs> and he's got <laughs> diplomas master as well chef. to prove it. Yes. Now, we actually, uh, a few weeks ago, we covered hypnotherapy. In fact, Jane was hypnotized. And for people who didn't see that program, well, let's show you what happened when we went uh, around to Robin's house. Here it is. Finger. Just keep your eyes on my finger. Just follow my finger with your eyes. That's good. Just follow my fingers. Follow my fingers. Good. And sleep. Relax. Now, just sleep. Relax. Deeper and deeper into relaxation. Your whole body's loose and limp now. Just drift deeper and deeper. Go back to where you were before. Totally relaxed. That's good. I want you to go back in your mind, because every second of your life, everything you've ever seen, heard, tasted, smelt, or experienced in any way, is in your subconscious memory. The information that I want at this time is associated with the time that you first started biting your nails and picking your nails for comfort. The information's there in your subconscious. But you're no longer a child now, Jane. You're now a woman. And as you look back at these things, these, this information, does it feel, or does it not feel, now immature to bite your nails at this age? Okay. James, dear boy. How are you doing, Robert? How are you? I'm okay, but I can't believe this. I can't believe this. Tell me, I mean, how did a, such a, a funny man get into something? It is serious, is it? Very. I mean, it, she is, is yes. not... She's totally relaxed. Pretending. She can hear everything you're saying, though. She's uh -huh. not asleep. Um, it's, um, people tend to believe that because you hypnotise, you're yeah. vastly asleep and you're gone and you're out to the world, but she can have a normal conversation with you, she can hear everything that's going on, and she's not under my control, I'm merely giving her suggestions mm. in a relaxed state. What sort of depth can you go to, Robin? I mean, the, we, we've seen you uh, helping Jane here with her fingernails, but, I mean, what, what sort of serious diseases would you have a go at? Everything I would think from nail-biting to cancer. Cancer? Yes. People who've got a strong will, um, doctors will say, oh, he's got a very strong will, he'll pull through, or he's got no will to live, and they tend to slip away. And it's this will to live, it's this subconscious uh, hanging on for life. So you can heighten somebody's yes. willpower? Yes, yes, that's it. We've got to go. Can you, uh, can you wake her up? Very, very quickly. Jane, on the count of two, you're wide awake, feeling wonderful in every way. One, two, you're wide awake, open your eyes. Welcome back. How do you <laughs> feel? <laughs> <laughs> I feel fine. Yeah? Just like I've been asleep, really, but sort of more refreshed. Really. You've got to tell me one thing. Mm. You weren't playing along with us just for the show, were you? Not at all, no. I mean, no. when you first came here, did you actually think, well, I don't want to embarrass myself, so I'll just go along with whatever he no, says? No, I don't think I'd have done that. I you wouldn't? No, no, I wouldn't. 461000. He's waiting for your call now. Okay, so any uh, calls on hypnotism, hypnotherapy, give us a ring now and uh, we'll talk to Robin about it. Now, Jane, this was a few weeks ago we did that, by the way. Now, Jane is here with us today and Jane is under hypnosis at this moment. Now, Robin, uh, is it dangerous? I mean, you, you've actually put her 
to sleep, although she can hear everything I'm saying, she knows... Well, she's not asleep, but we use the word sleep. Okay, so yeah. explain the state that she's in. Totally relaxed. Mm. She can hear everything that's going on, her body's asleep, you know, her whole, her whole body's floppy, that's asleep, but mm. she's fully awake, she can hear everything that's happening. Mm. How dangerous can this be if people who don't know what they're doing try it? <sighs> I don't know that anybody could actually hypnotise somebody if they didn't know how to do it, mm. really. You've got to know, once you learn a little bit about it, then you suddenly realise that it's um, yeah. not something to play with. You see, I'm, I'm a fine one to talk about taking the pee, as you know, but uh, sometimes, watch it, <laughs> sometimes people use this as a stage act, and it's quite demeaning in some ways. <clears throat> well, I can do the stage stuff. Um, that's when I first started doing it, actually, for fun. Yeah. But, and it is fun, you, but nobody will do anything they don't really want to do. Mm. You can't make anybody do anything they don't want to right. do. And they know what they're doing. If you say you're a dog, they're all barking. They think, well, I feel like being a dog. They've no inhibitions, basically. They're so relaxed. Their inhibitions are gone. Um, and they feel like being a dog. But if you tell them to go out and rob a bank mm. or lie under a bus, they won't do it. Because they say no. OK, we're going to come back. We'll wake her up in a few minutes. Let her, let her sleep, because she may as well at the moment. And we'll have a look at Jane's nails in a few moments. But if you want to ring, you can. The phones are uh, flashing away. Well, and Donna's crawling out under the cameras. Get some coffee. Now, uh, Mark is on the phone. Let's try one call first of all. Mark, hello. Hello. You're calling from, uh, where are you calling from? Eastwood. Eastwood? Yep. Oh, Whereabouts gosh. is that? Near Nottinghamshire. Near Nottinghamshire. That's very nice, isn't it? Very, very nice, nice indeed. Yeah. What can we do for you, Mark? Um, I'd like to ask the, the hypnotist um, what he feels about hypnotising people to, to convict people, as in Stuart Goff murder case. Are you familiar with that? I heard a little bit about it on the radio. I'm not totally familiar with it. No, I, I, was it a witness who... They've taken him back, facts? haven't they, to see... Uh, yeah, what they've regressed him. Yeah. And he's brought some facts yeah. out. Yeah, well, he brought something about his car. Yeah. They got the, the notes on his car and then... Uh -huh. Yeah, it's, um, it's a good thing to do because you can use hypnosis to bring out things that you block off or you can't remember because you're drunk or can't remember because you don't want to. I think this particular guy was, um, he's got yeah. a block. <coughs> because can you actually horrendous. regress people, take them back to another, another yeah, time? Yeah, yeah. Or you can take them back earlier yeah. in your life. I, I did somebody in a rape case that, that, um, a couple of years ago because mm. he couldn't remember because he was drunk and he wanted to know if he'd done it or hadn't done it as it happens he hadn't. But. Okay, we'll talk some more about that a little later. You can call us, 46 1000. Thank you to Mark. We'll be back after the break. I don't know, but I've been told. Stay as well. Change well on your radio. Stay as well. Now he's on the TV too. Stay as well. Call him now, he'll talk to you. OK, welcome back. Whaley's on, and uh, <laughs> we'll take some more calls in a few moments. Robin Colville is with us, and uh, Alan Hull and Ray Laidlaw from Lindisfarne have joined us in the studio as well, and they'll be uh, singing and playing a little bit later on. But at the moment, I know the guys are interested in this, Jane is still under hypnosis. She's still asleep, and uh, I think it's probably about time we, we brought her out of this. Uh, OK. Can you, can you wake her up first of all? And then yeah, we'll sure. Yeah. All right, you can talk to her if you want to. Yeah. Good, Jane. I'll cut from five to one on the counter, one fully awake. Five is... Tingling down at the tips of your toes now, moving all the way through your body. Four, I want you to breathe in deeply. Fill your lungs with fresh, cool, clear mountain air. That's good. Three, imagine washing your face in a clear, cool mountain stream. Three, two, every nerve, fibre, muscle, tissue, tendon of your body is fully rested now as you get more and more awake, feeling wonderfully refreshed. Come on, wide awake. Open your eyes, wide awake. Hi. <laughs> You're back. How back do you feel? Fine. You sure? Hold yeah. your hands up. Let's have a look at your hands. Are those yeah. folks? You haven't done too badly there, have you? No. Now, you good. told me you'd never, ever managed to grow your fingernails before. No, I haven't. This is the longest I've ever been. Uh-huh. Because you were quite sceptical, really, weren't you? Yeah. And people were taking was. the mick out of you in the yeah. office. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. But, um, I mean, I've proved it yeah. to myself and to other people, I think. Can anybody do this, Robin? I mean, can people can people do this at home or not? How would they? To themselves, perhaps? Yeah, self-hypnosis is wonderful. In fact, there was a girl on um, the Wogan show. Sorry about that. The eleven-year-old girl had can <coughs> cancer who, uh, who cured herself. Not cured yeah. herself. She had yeah. treatment, but they said that she was terminal. But she decided she didn't want to because she wanted to be a, a ballerina, I think. And she's written a book. She's brilliant. But she's using positive suggestion, which is the same as self-hypnosis. Once yeah. you tell yourself you're going to do it, doing yeah. the right way, you can overcome anything really. Are from you nail biting to horrendous things? Are you able to relax more? Um, 
Because you're quite a tense person, which is why you were, were biting yeah. your fingernails. Are you, yeah. are you able to relax more? Yeah, I think it's helped. Mm. I, mean, I mean, Robin did me a bit before, so I mean, that helped me to relax first, yeah. yeah. Okay, yes. we'll relax some more for the moment. <laughs> <laughs> relax, relax some more. more. Okay, other crew all right tonight. I mean, they've been very quiet tonight. We've got a lot of Scotsmen in the crew, aren't they? Look at this, is nice. If you get a shot of him, have a look at him over there. Very nice, in red. Very lovely. Yeah. Just in case. I thought we actually had the Proclaimers playing live tonight, looking at these two. But never mind, we'll talk uh, to Linda's final a little bit later on as well. If you want to write in to the show, uh, we talked the other week about the sort of uh, things we were going to be doing. We've had loads of letters. Now, show's coming up in the next couple of weeks. Watch this. <laughs> What was that all about? That was the wrong one, wasn't it? Never mind. Uh, if, if, you, <laughs> if you want to uh, write, stick that up on the screen again. And this is the address to write to Wales Mail, care of Yorkshire Television, the television centre, Leeds, LS3, 1JS. Right. Uh, let's take a couple of phone calls. Thank you, Charlie, Hebden Bridge. Hello, Charlie. Hello, my name's Chaz. It's Chaz, is it? It's Chaz. Okay. But well, hello. What can we could do I, for you, Chaz? Uh, could I ask uh, Robin if he's actually ever regressed anybody, taken anybody back to previous lives? Yes, I did. I took my wife back to, um... It's getting this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I'm a comedian, you know, I mean. I met my wife in Australia. I said, what are you doing here? She's looking out for the kids. I regressed her back to about 1755, I think it was, and we yeah. checked all the facts out. I'm not saying that I, I truly believe in um, reincarnation. Or not. All I can uh -huh. say is that when you do regression, you can relate times, dates, and facts of which you've no conscious knowledge. Right. And when you check them out, they're generally very yeah. correct. Chaz, very sorry, correct. Chaz, what? How does this how does this affect people in their uh, in in their in their lives that they're existing today? Does it affect them in any way? Does it frighten the hell out of them? Do you yes, mean? yes. Yeah, does it frighten the hell out of people when you do that or not? Some people get get regressed because they just want to know who they were for the fun of it and check it out and say, well, I used to be a bank robber or I used to be a butcher when I was in my last life. Right. Um, interest sake but sometimes people are regressed to try and find out a predominant fault they've got with them mm. if they mm. they're very very slim mm. or they've got anorexia sometimes it's they were, they were the opposite in another life they were excessively fat in another life mm. and once the subconscious is aware of it it tends to cancel itself out and uh, yeah. it uses it as a cure help. basically yeah. Okay, uh, thank you very much indeed, Chaz. By the way, have you been regressed, Chaz, or not? I haven't, but it's, it's, yeah? it's quite a nice thought. Is it? It certainly is. That's your excuse, huh? That's my excuse. Thank you, Chaz. <laughs> Cheers, <James>. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Right. <laughs> what are you doing down there? You're making nothing but noise. Listen, would you stop it? You think it all works, don't you? Look at it. It's quite disgusting, really. Now, uh, we have had an enormous amount of letters, but, I mean, I really must take uh, exception to some of the comments, you know, on my baldness, which I can't help. You can't do anything about that. I can't help that. Just your head's <laughs> and, faster than your hair, that's all. <laughs> and uh, all sorts of, uh, of other things as well. I've sorted all these flipping letters out, and now you've gone and put them in a mess. Right. This is one from Patrice, who wrote to me from Plymouth. And I think this is rather nice. She says, James, I have watched your show twice. I have nothing but utter contempt for it. <laughs> You're a balding, middle-aged, failed excuse for a yuppie. Don't stop me in the street to comment on the crap on your show, as I will be hard pushed to prevent myself from stuffing nine inches of boot leather up your dark alley. <laughs> <laughs> very nice, very nice, thank you. I mean, I'm sure not everybody in Plymouth is like that, are they? And uh, that's, yeah. uh, that's her letter. It's nicely typed. I do like it if you can type them nicely. I can read them more easily that way. And uh, Ben Gerber from uh, Argyle said, so we've gone from one end of the country up to the other end, and uh, Ben said he enjoyed the show and the best programme on telly last week. Eating your pets, he said. It makes very good sense environmentally. It reduces demand for meat, meaning less forests are destroyed. Eat your pet and stop the greenhouse effect. Thank you very much indeed, Ben. <laughs> Now, <laughs> now, if you would like to write next week, we'd like some letters in on addiction. We've had a number of letters in on addiction already, and uh, we would like your letters on addiction. Just to sort of stir you up a little bit, watch this. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm going around amusement arcades asking people what they... Uh, what, 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 what do you do? Turn it off. Wait, what do you mean turn it off? What do you mean, well, I'm asking you. Oh, I'm asking you. Oh, no, you're not. You're coming in there. Uh-huh. Uh, well, I'm asking you nicely. Can we film in here? No. Why not? You're not allowed. What have you got to hide? I'm sorry, no more. Don't you dare no. touch me. Otherwise, I'll run the film. Right? Well, I will, and it'll be your company, won't it, my friend? No, listen. No, listen. This is a, this is a, a public place. Are you going to physically throw me out on the street? You're really going to physically throw me out on the street?
Are you addicted to anything? Yeah, crisps. I mean, no. I you should show me how it goes. Do you have to you stand around here and, and eat? No, you do that. This, this, all sorry. day, all Go. day. I yeah. can't keep away from my mouth. Really you bad. sure you can't, you know, is it bad? But I don't, and don't inject. You don't inject no, crisps? No, no, yeah. I don't. Yeah. I just eat. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I don't, um, I don't smoke them, you know, just eat them. You don't? It's really bad, you know. Uh -huh. I spend all my pocket money on crisps. Oh, my God, my poor man. And, oh uh, I, I, I've left school. I've left yeah. school to work, yeah. so I can get money to, oh, more money to buy crisps. I don't want you to look at this. This is awful. Yeah, there's a serious side to the uh, addiction as well, and uh, there's a letter here. Now, you may laugh, first of all. It comes from Linda Berry from Dewsbury in West Yorkshire, and she says, I heard you mention that you wanted people to talk about addiction. I feel ashamed to say that my addiction is to chocolate. It's been a nightmare for me, and it's been going on for eight years, and this is serious. She says, I've had many ups and downs in my life, and I've conquered them all, but chocolate seems to win every time. I've even had my stomach fat cut out, and I thought of trying hypnotism to stop eating chocolate. So it is a serious point. Could hypnotism do that? I think I'd go for hypnotism before I had my stomach cut out. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, joking aside, I mean, it's, it's a big problem in her life. Mm. What seems small in our lives are obviously very big in hers. But uh, I would definitely suggest mm. that, not necessarily me, but there's lots of good hypnotists about I would definitely use it, yeah. Watch next week's programme anyway, Linda. And uh, there's a funny side of addiction as well, like the guys uh, eating crisps and somebody we met uh, addicted to peanut butter. Have you actually got any addictions well, for that? I mean, people won't actually talk to me. They won't come to my house because, yeah. because I'm addicted I'm to surprised. pork pies. I mean, I like pork pies. Well, I like I mean, do you like pork pies? Yeah. You yeah. like them as well? Yeah, we all like pork pies. You must come nice. round and see my collection. I've got 43,000 of them. My life. They're brilliant. My <laughs> life already. <laughs> well. Let's take a few calls. Don from Devon. Hello, Don. Hello, James. Speak to us. How's Devon tonight? It's uh, fine, but cool. Is it cool? Yeah, very it's cool. Flipping cold out in that tent earlier, I can tell you. <laughs> it looked it. You. It was flipping cold. What can we do for you, Don? I'll ask you, Robin, please, about hypnotherapy. Yeah. Um, and just to say to him that I've tried a couple of sessions myself in the past few weeks. I'm, I'm trying to stop smoking in a big way. And uh, I've had a, a couple of sessions yeah. of hypnotherapy. No good? Um, well, the, the sessions themselves were very good because you felt so relaxed afterwards, but the day after, everything seemed to have gone. Is there any degree of uh, hypnotherapy? You know, is yeah. there any sort of professionalism involved? Okay, the got the idea, Don. Thank you for your call. I mean, if it doesn't work once, can you go to somebody and get a stronger dose or not? Not really, no. Smoking is the hardest one, I w in my opinion, is the hardest one yeah. of everything. To you do. can't actually stop smoking people and drinking. to do things they don't want to do, can you? No. The, the secret being, you wish you didn't smoke, but stopping is a different ballgame. Yeah. Okay, let me just talk to William from Glasgow. Hello, William. Hello. Hi. Uh, we'd just like to find out, no, uh, Robert Halpern has been sued uh, through hypnotism. Yeah. For accidents happen to people, do you ever actually wonder if it will ever happen to you? That's a good point, isn't it, Robin? Uh, are you covered for uh, accidents or not? Well, I'm not in I'm not in that position because Robert Halpern's a stage hypnotist. He's not a hypnotherapist, and yeah. he does a stage act, and he's got people running around doing ballet, ballet things and stuff like that. So the, the accidents they they fall off the stage because they're so relaxed. They're not taking notice of where the steps are. That's how they get. Um, that's how they have accidents. Things like that. On stage hypnotism. Yeah. It's not through the hypnosis itself, it's just that they don't care. I think the watchword though is be careful. Yeah. Be careful. All right, thank you for that call. We'll take some more calls a little later on. Now, um, we're going to give some CDs away. Linda's fine. You're right, lads. Yeah. You haven't gone to sleep, have you? No, good, good. Okay. I'll get to them in a minute. You get to them in a few moments, yeah. <laughs> the fog on the tine is all mine. Now, we've got Linda's fine CDs to give away. Full set of Linda's fine CDs. There, is it any different on CD or not? Louder. Louder. Oh, good. So it's louder. All you have to do is uh, tell me what time to the nearest second the first, okay, the first commercial break was on last week's show. What time to the nearest second did we take the first commercial break on last week's show? We'll show you the address later. Speaking of which, we'll take one now. <laughs> Okay, welcome back. Thank you very much indeed. And I haven't been rude to you once tonight, have I? Not yet. And we're going to get Robin to hypnotise you a little later on, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. 
Very nice. <laughs> Some more letters. Listen, a little later on, we're going to be talking to Chris Bray, who is a witch uh, about the occult. We had a lot of letters when we did a program on the occult the other day. And uh, C. Whitley from Telford has written to me and said, I watched your program on Central, and I was interested in the debate about the occult. No true witch or warlock would ever dream of harming a child physically or mentally. The people who do this are the same people who desecrate graves, slaughter animals, and commit sacrilege. And these people are sick. They use the occult as a front. So if you have any views on the occult you'd like to talk to Chris, we'll be discussing that a bit later on this evening. Now, every um, letter that we read out, of course, we uh, say we'll send you back a packet of the uh, Jiffy Late Night Entertainment condoms, but you must put in the letter that you would like us to send you one, because I'd hate to send them. Shut up. I'd ha I would hate to send them. I would hate to send them to somebody who was perhaps lying about their age, and they fell on the mat, and I'd be in trouble. Okay, look, don't fight. Have another packet as well. You'd think Listen, they've got condoms in your castle. They've got the sort now where you don't have to reuse them <laughs> as well, so don't give me that. Listen, mate, what happens when you come to that condom moment and the bird do not smoke a pipe? <laughs> You're in Stuck, basically, I think, to be quite honest about it. Let's, um, let's have a chat with our friends from Lindisfarne. I haven't seen you for years and years and years. Yeah. When I used to have the, uh, the fun of living in your castle, of course, uh, it was actually, it was just when you were beginning. It was just sort of getting going, wasn't it? Yes, you had more hair then, James, actually. <laughs> I had a lot more hair then. Yeah. But well, I hadn't had to, I hadn't had to dye mine, had I? I mean, I hadn't had to dye mine. I'll talk to you, Ray. I yeah, mean, talk to you me. Know, I'll talk to you. <laughs> yeah. Have you managed to make a living sort of fairly well out of this ever since, what, back in 1976, 77? Well, we have to keep doing this sort of thing, you know. But we Does manage. it get up your nose or not? Well, you know, it's... To live in, isn't yeah. it? There's not enough room at Main with. No room in <laughs> Because they said Alan was the new John Lennon. Do you remember the North East John That's Lennon? That's right, yes. Yeah. 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 I'm still alive. Well, I was going to say, you know, it hasn't really gone the way. You you haven't met Yoko Ono yet either. Have Just you? as well. He's a granddad now, you know. <laughs> I, remember a, a granddad. Granddad. I know He's granddad, granddad folks, yes. yes. We're going to see them play a little bit later on. Do you like the suit? Uh, I thought we'd sort of smarten up the image <coughs> of the show, and uh, everybody in here has failed to do it, except the floor manager. Get a little shot of him over there, David. And uh, very smart. Look at that. Just hear it for David. That's very nice. <laughs> very nice indeed. Now, I have been very rude about Barnsley. Oh, you'll like this, lads, because with uh, your history of the outside mm -hmm. netty, Oh, the netty. Oh, the netty. Oh, yes. the netty. We haven't had much toilet humour in the programme, so let's get back to that. Uh, I've been very rude about Barnsley. Barnsley, of course, famous for its chops. Arthur Scargill, slag heaps, lots of other people. What's wrong with you? You all right? Yes, I'm You fine. haven't said a thing all night. This is work now. Earlier today, we went to Barnsley to ask people what they thought about moist toilet paper. <laughs> goes to town. Have you ever tried moist toilet paper? <laughs> moist toilet paper, sir, have you tried it? No. Never? Never. Have you, madam? No. Have you considered it? No. Will you consider it? No. Now look. Look how look, 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 look. Moist toilet paper. <laughs> No, I must be joking. Well, I don't see why not. I suppose it's quite all right. Look. <laughs> oh, Jibbles, I don't like Listen. it. Listen. Come, come, what? Come, oh. come. Oh, for goodness sake. Oh, there we are. Look. Hi. Really? How are you? All right? Good. Moist loo paper. <laughs> Come on, sir. Plenty more space down there. Moist toilet tissue, sir. Please try it out. I'm not going for one of them. Try it out. We'll talk to you when you come back. Let's go upstairs and talk about we it. We are not. <laughs> Where's the loo? No, I'm not going to them. Do we want them to show? No. no. Yes. No. yes. Would you like to try it? No. no. Some more satisfied customers, we hope. Was it all right for you? Yeah, it's a very good idea. Thank you very much indeed, sir. Did you enjoy that? Oh, it changed my way of life. That's fine. Good, thanks. lovely. Thank you very much indeed, sir. Did you, uh, did yes, you enjoy it? Yes, it, it was very nice. Good. You come round now, I'll give you one back. What did you think about the moist toilet tissue? Well, I thought it was good to take my makeup off with. <laughs> it's a very funny place to wear makeup. Smash your files. <laughs> As you've been a good sport, and I mean you have what been, you mean a good sport? you've been a very good sport. Tonight. I mean you have been a very good sport. I would like to award you a packet of my late night entertainment. Oh. Packages, all right. Okay. As you can see, it has the logo on it as well, made for me specially. By if that's rude, I shall slap you. <laughs> what do you consider to be rude? It just depends what mood I'm in. <laughs> Take it all now. Go on. I've had enough of this. 461000. He's waiting for your call now. Oh, it's a cock. 
<laughs> oh, can we start? Listen, I am too old for Network 7. Listen, uh, Matthew Brin from Merseyside wrote to me. He said, enjoy the show, though it's on too late. Love the idea of dressing Donna in a different outfit each week. And may I suggest a holiday camp nudist outfit, which I think is very good. And we will do that. Uh, could she please come and sit on my knee? She won't even sit on my knee without a lot of persuasion. So I don't think you have much chance. And please, when I get home from school, don't send me a late night entertainment pack because it will get me into a lot of trouble with my mum. I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Right, Chris Bray is here. He's a witch, and I'm going to be talking to him in a little while. But first, some music live from some friends of mine. You met them just before, Linda's fun, and all about the problems of uh, the possible takeover of the Newcastle breweries by an Australian firm. To fight this up there on Tyneside, they decided to bring out a song, and it's called Save Our Whale. Uh, ale, ale, sorry, Save Our Ale. Here it is. Don't milk your parts, please, for goodness sake. Don't you think I look the epitome of a television presenter today? I thought after last week it was quite nice. This is where the phone calls come. You see, they're all busy at the moment. So keep trying. Leeds 46 1000. We'll be back after the break. You were amused, weren't you? Yeah, good, very nice. I wasn't going to do it, unless I'll do it. Bring this round here. This, uh, please. This is um, the new, all right, okay, don't butter it. This is the new Lindisfarne t-shirt here, you see, with the bottle of Brunel. Oh. Aye, oh -ho. And uh, we're going to throw that in with the, uh, the yes, prize. Please. Okay, the competition, we will do a little recap at the end of the show and give you the, um, give you the, uh, the address to send it to. Now listen, I, I was thinking, I don't know whether, guys, you're interested. Would you like to see Donna modeling this before yeah! the end of the show? Go and slip in that, please. Brilliant. Um, <laughs> Chris Bray has joined me. Let's talk to Chris. Chris, Hello. welcome to the show. Chris Hi. appeared in uh, one of the first shows we did, and uh, Chris is a witch. Well, you know, we're having a fairly light-hearted conversation, I'm afraid, with some of these people we were. But it's serious. You are seriously a witch. Oh, yes, yes. And there's a lot of us, too. But Yes, I know there are a lot of you, yes. Last week, with um, Halloween, everybody was getting their knickers in a twist about the occult and it's, uh, it's getting, mm. children are getting sucked into it. We had Jeffrey Dickens on the program the other day. Why not make as much noise as you can and then we know what you're trying to do. Um, thank you. That's the address. Uh, we had Jeffrey Dickens on who was saying there's a, a lot of child abuse that goes on with uh, the occult mm. and uh, we're still waiting to hear some evidence on this. Absolutely. Yes. This is a Ouija board. Uh -huh. Okay, you see this. Now, I, I actually had a friend who ended up in a psychiatric hospital because he messed around, or they thought that that's why it happened. That's, that's the crux of the matter. I yes. mean, I'm concerned. You sell a lot of these. How many do you we sell? Do. Oh, do? well, uh, we sell thousands of them. Yeah. Yes, they're very, very popular indeed. Yeah. Are you not worried about people actually damaging themselves? Uh, not at all with our board, because we include the information which is necessary to make it work safely. Yeah. Yeah. The problem occurs, of course, when you get people who dabble, uh, you know, the old uh, yeah. cards and uh, glasses. And uh, th those people who haven't the information which is necessary to control the energies that they're working with open up their subconscious mind and can, in actual fact, mm. cause themselves difficulties. But you see, I mean, we've got here, can I, I mean, it's upset them not standing up, but we've got here the chalice and uh, we've got the, uh, the, bell. the bell to summon up what? Well, actually, it's to ring the changes in consciousness yeah. during ritual. Yeah. Yes. And you've got a whole box of goodies down here, which we okay. probably won't have time to get to. But, I mean, is it a sort of... Uh, 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 do people buy these things from you to actually perhaps use in a rather a fetish uh, sexual perversion in some way? No, not really. It'd be a bit difficult with the bell, but... Um, well... The, <laughs> the, uh, now, the upshot of all the uh, equipment that yeah. goes onto the altar really is symbolic. Everything that's on the altar has its parallels, actually, in most yeah. religions. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's to form a psychodrama. It's in the psychodrama that um, you actually liberate consciousness, and it's that accelerated yeah. consciousness which gives yeah. you an insight into yourself, which otherwise you wouldn't be able to. You've achieve. also got some tarot cards here. That's right. Okay. That's the Alistair Crowley's pack of tarot. Is it? Well, we, I went to visit uh, a young lady I think you're familiar with. Her name is Bryn Ormsford, yeah. and uh, she told me all about tarot cards. Very interesting. 
you watch this. Hang on, I'll press the button, then you can watch it. I've come to a very pretty little Dales village, and uh, I've come here to meet a very attractive young lady with a, with a fellow's name, Bryn. Hello. Hello, James. Now, Bryn is a psychic, mm -hmm. a tarot reader, yes. a palmist. In fact, what is there a collective name for the sort of things that you do? Well, some people call it clairvoyant, mm. but um, I just be a psychic. I mean, do you actually sit with a crystal ball occasionally? I don't have a crystal ball, no, I don't use one. You don't use one? No. And people will come to you, well, that's how you make your living, presumably. People yes, come to you and they want to know the future. Mm. Well, I go to them as well, mm. book parties and things. I've always, I've always been very, I mean, I would hate, as you know, when I came in, I said, I, I, you know, don't tell me anything about me. <laughs> yeah. I, because it would frighten the life out of me to know what was going to happen in the future. Why do people want to know? Um, well, they want, everyone's curious about what's going to happen in the future, but also very frightened in case I tell them something horrible, mm -hmm. which isn't always the case. Yeah. You don't always tell them? No. No, not anything horrible. Mm -hmm. anyway. Okay, well, Bryn, tell me about some of your um, paraphernalia. Mm -hmm. Can I call it that? This, first of all, this rather <clears throat> phallic-looking thing here, which I thought was uh, a pastry roller, but it isn't, is it? <laughs> what is this? This is that's an Egyptian wand. Uh -huh. Now, wands are, are quite important, aren't they? In, yes, um, they're very important. In this sort of thing, why? They're used for ritual um, power mm -hmm. in the ceremonies and things like that. Do you think that, uh, that, that people are specially chosen, perhaps, to, to have this gift, or do you think everybody has it? I think everyone has it. Mm. It's just whether you use it and exploit it. I know it sounds yeah. awful, but to exploit it, you have to do it. Now, these on, on the table, these little wooden chips on the table, mm. look rather like the, uh, the chips you get when you go to a casino. Yes. What are they? These are runes, and they're Anglo-Saxon. Mm -hmm. They go back quite a long time. They came into this country in about 3000 AD, that type of thing, and they used a very similar way to tarot cards mm -hmm. for divination. You can use several or just three. Yeah. And they all have their own meanings. And can we hold a few up and we can yeah. have, a, have a look and tell me exactly what they mean? Well, that's Bjork, yes. which is relating to the birch tree. Right. That's Thea, which means like wealth, money, prosperity, yeah. cattle. Yeah. And are these special to an individual uh, uh, clairvoyant? or? Um, you make them yourself. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you make them from wood or stone or yeah. clay or whatever yeah. you want to do. Um, yes, you make them yourself and you burn them into the wood, mm -hmm. so they're very significant to yourself. Any particular sort of wood or not? A fruit-bearing wood. Mm -hmm. Now, you have the tarot cards there, and because I'm very dubious about these sort of things and worried about them, I got the producer <laughs> to shuffle them before we started this. Can you lay a few out? Let's have a look, yes, see if yes. he's as bad as we all really think he is. Do you have to reshuffle them after he's played with them as well? Well, you, you wouldn't shuffle them earlier, so... No, I wouldn't, no, no. Um, this is just like a Roman cross, right, okay. which consists of about ten. Yep. Move those out of the way. There's loads of different ways to lay down the tarot cards. Mm -hmm. oh, well, it's not too bad. The Ace of Cups is a nice card. <laughs> the Ace of what? The Ace of Cups, which is like an emotional card. This is an emotional Sensitivity card. Sensitivity and emotions. Yeah. Yeah. Things like that. Um, the That's Empress. That one. Yeah. Yeah. The Empress card, the Adjustment card, these type of things, these are higher arcana cards. Uh -huh. There's 22 in this particular set. And that basically means it's a good thing, like a determination mm. and warmth around the person. Okay, talk to me about this one here is... The Adjustment card mm. usually is associated with things like lawsuits. Right. Yes, oh, right. fascinating. Yes, he'll be interested to know that. <laughs> yes. yes, that's good. What's this? This is this the nasty one <clears> down here? The Knight of Discs, that represents either a person or a situation, usually a person it represents. Mm. Um, and in this case, it's a man with like brownish hair, yeah. reddish brown hair. Really? He's associated with. Yeah. I wonder if he knows anybody with reddish brown <laughs> hair. Yes. Okay, now, this is just a quick, we don't have much time, obviously, but this is just a quick reading. If somebody came to you, mm. how long would they actually stay with you? It could be from 20 minutes to an hour, depending on the type of question they asked. Do you have regulars? Yes, I have regulars coming to me. Mm. that's had readings in the past, like in a party booking or something like that. And they'll ring me up, and if they've got a problem, they go for a job or something. Mm. You know, they will ring me up and ask me what the outcome will be. 46-1000. James Whale. Okay, Whale is on. Welcome to the Late Night TV Show. And if you have uh, a radio show that's on TV, if you like, if you have... Uh, uh, a well-tuned-in radio station near you. You can probably get the music on stereo. We'll have some more music, by the way, from Lindisfarne next week. Now, we've got loads of calls coming in. I've got a new bill spike here to keep everything 
nicely. Did you like that? No. I'm going to do that really again. <laughs> Can you watch that again? Impaled. Look at that. Oh, right. Uh, Bryn's on the phone. Hello, Bryn. Good morning, James. Hi. Did you enjoy that? Yes, I did. It was quite nice. Yeah. Somebody said it was a little dark. It was the first thing in the morning. We got there. You weren't, uh, you weren't even dressed when we got there, were you? No, I wasn't. I was <laughs> have, um, have, you, have you sort of uh, been doing this? I asked you in the, uh, in the interview, really, but have you, have you been doing this ever since you were sort of fairly young or not? Since I was about 14, I would yeah. say. Did you actually, did you get a sort of a, a notion that you were gifted in some way or not? Um, I didn't start out that way, no. I just practiced. Yeah. Because... And continued. Do, I mean, do, do, do people just uh, have, a, have a gift or do they... they... Some people are better than others, naturally. Yeah. Uh, but everybody has the power. I mean, it's a natural creative power. Mm -hmm. Anybody can learn to apply it. I mean, that's why the occult has become so popular, because people do experiment and find out that it works for them. So everybody, regardless yeah. of their, uh, their approach, if they look at it seriously and work it from the heart, will find that it actually produces results for them. But you see, people of a, of a, a low mental state, if you like, or people who are easily led, Ray, stop looking like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are, are they likely to get sucked into, <laughs> sucked into a sort of a web that they are unlikely to get out of fairly easily? No, th th these are uh, natural human fears, but they don't really exist. I mean, I've never come across anybody yeah. that's been sucked into yeah. anything. These n name nameless states, which are, uh, you know, really just figments of our own imagination. Uh, the, the occult is a, a creative yeah. force, not a, a, an evil force. Let's, uh, I mean, I don't like to do this, really, Brim, but while they're here, we might as well make use of them. Do, I mean, have you got any questions you'd like to ask Brim? You just or on the f no, not that yes, sort of question. Yes, I have, yeah. Oh, you're happy, all right. Yeah, yes. I, talk, I talked to Chris earlier. Yeah. Well, I was fascinated actually by his explanation of the occult. Have you ever dabbled or not? Well, I dabbled in religions, James. You know, mm. when I was a young lad, you know, as you do, you know, when you're teenage years, you know, like you're trying to find yourself, yeah. like yeah. people do when you're in your adolescence. And I looked at everything. I'd, 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 uh, I'd rejected Christianity. And I looked at Eastern religions, and mm. I looked at the occult. I found that Buddhism was the best thing for me. But what Chris has been saying earlier on, and what he's been saying tonight, it's very, very interesting. And it, it isn't any, mm. it isn't spooky at all. If you do it properly, the occult has got. A, I should imagine has got a lot to offer. Mm. What about you, Ray? People. I'm irreligious, I suppose. Really, yeah. uh, it's interesting. I've, I've lot, learned a lot of things tonight just listening to them talk. Yeah. It, it, it's. I think that the important thing to remember is that. Occultists aren't proselytizing any mm. form of belief. Um, most people that are involved in occultism are really campaigning for the freedom to follow their own particular beliefs as it fits their nature. So they, there's not some kind yep. of conspiracy behind that. It's yep. just a, a matter of total liberation of freedom. Okay, I hope that uh, if you disagree with this, you're going to uh, write as well because, you know, we don't have a lot of time. We'll try and get some more calls in in a few moments. Thank you for that. Thank you, Bryn. Thank you very much, James. Nice to meet you. Nice to hear your voice again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Very nice, very nice. Now, um, I don't know, where, where, yeah, you, you're camera one, aren't you? You're right, you've been very quiet. And I get a load of these two guys here, both from Scotland. Who do they remind you of? Look at that. Don't they remind you of the Proclaimers? No! They do. <laughs> they very well do. dressed. <laughs> Too well dressed. Well, you watch the Proclaimers and see if they look similar. Here they are. We hope they may come and sing for us live, like Linda's Farm one night as well. Um, I like that. Hey, hey. You can shut up as well. <laughs> oh, we can come over here. Come accents, over here. Do you think I... cake? What? <laughs> oh, you oh, 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 drug, I've been oh, practicing oh, like. Oh, shh, oh, hang on a minute. Here is the lovely Donna. You wanted to see her. Here she is. Back a bit. Back a bit. Back a bit over there. They can see more of you. This is included in the prize, along with CDs from Linda's Farm. Hang on a minute. <laughs> You've got a flipping ladder there, you want to be careful of that. Along with CDs from Linda's Farn, and all you had to do is tell me, write in and tell us, uh, what time we took the first commercial break in last week's show. What time did we take the first commercial break in last week's show? Write to Wales Mail, Yorkshire Television, Leeds LS3, 1JS. Thank you very much indeed. Some phone calls coming up. Stephen from Preston. Hello, Stephen. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I like it. I'll ask the yeah, when you can speak properly, phone back. Bev from, <laughs> Bev from Glasgow, hello. Hello? Yes, Bev. Ben. Well, I'd like to ask the expert on the call whether or not he thinks it's dangerous advocating the white side of magic, whereas the black side, the black side of magic could easily take him over because obviously he's, he's weaker yeah. because he doesn't go for the right hand do you, think, do you think he's been taken over by, some, uh, by, by, by an evil force or not? 
Would you I think, think it's easily possible. Mm. Looking at his face. Now, there, 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 isn't, there isn't such a thing as a, an evil force. Beard, you see. That's right, absolutely. <laughs> um, there isn't such a thing as an evil force. The evil resides in the heart of man. Uh, magic is a creative force, and those people that want to use it for evil can't do so because they haven't got the commitment and the energy which is needed to learn yeah. how to manipulate it. So you're sure that you're not being taken over? Uh, in as much as anybody is sure yeah. that they're not okay. being taken over. Right, thank you very much. Now, Margaret from Cheshire. Hello, Margaret. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, I'd like to ask Robin. Yeah. about his hypnotherapy. I have been about five times and paid out an awful lot of money to hypnotherapy. Do you want to know how much he charges? <laughs> uh, no, no, I don't. Oh, uh, but the I thing do. is, I have got emphysema and I've got to stop smoking. Right. Now, on each occasion, they have said to me that a true hypnotist does not put you to sleep. Robin. You don't go to sleep, no, we've yeah. already discussed that. I said it earlier in the beginning of the programme. Um, hypnotism is not sleep, it is a state of total relaxation. Uh, you are aware of everything, but you are in a suggestible state, and hypnosis uses suggestion to your subconscious. OK, Margaret, thank you for that. John from Buckinghamshire. Hello. Hello, John. Hello, John, thank you for calling. Trevor from Hull, hello. Hello. Hello, Trevor, very uh, nice to talk uh, to you. And Stephen from Belfast, hello. Yeah, hello, okay. hello, Stephen, very nice. I'm sorry we couldn't get him any more on the, on the show tonight, but we hope to. Next week, get the competitions in and the letters for addiction as well, if you please. And may I say to Gary Wright from Wolverhampton, Gary, thank you for your letter and thank you for the tie. I think I will keep on with my ties, but there we are. Thank you to Linda's Farm, thank you to Robin, to Chris, and to everybody else, and all of you for watching the programme as well. We're back at the same time next Saturday morning at one o'clock. Round of applause, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, one thing, one thing, before we go, here. The James Whale Firework. Have a safe firework day. Bye. Now, <coughs> what? Oh, have you? Seven or six or six.